Hey everybody, this is A7X10Bad, and I'll teach you about the pros and cons of the longship ship type. So longships were introduced with Frozen North. They're pretty much the signature ship of the Viking faction, a few other factions got them as well. But you can see a picture from the 2014 fleet review of the longships head on there. And then there's some more in this picture here, or the same ones from a different angle. So let's go to the longship keyword, and I have a video on this. So basically, you can roll two dice per mass. So the ship has two cannons on each mass, so firepower is basically doubled. So if you have a two massive longship, you can get four shots in one shoot action, which is really impressive, and part of the reason they're so expensive. But it's a packed keyword. A lot of people stop there, but there's actually a lot more to the keyword. So it can't pin or be pinned. If she rams, the ship gets plus one to her boarding roll. Uh, when given a move action, she can rotate on her stern in any direction as additional final movement segment and can be given move actions when no mass, so you can row at S speed. So most of that is similar to galleys and other rowed ships um, with the moving and the stern turn. So it's kind of like schooner, can't be pin or be pinned. You've got kind of like an oarsman thing because you can row with the oars, of course, but then you get plus one to boarding rolls after a ram. So it's a very packed keyword, and it results in the ships being really pricey. So there's only three variations, which is, and they're all... You can group them pretty similarly, which is why I'm not doing a separate video for each like mast count, like one versus two versus three massive longships. I could cover them all pretty quickly here. So they're only, they only come in one, two, and three masts, so that's the problem. They're kind of like referred to as glass cannons sometimes because they're fragile for the firepower. So you get six shots in a three massive longship, but if you get hit, um, you've only got three masts, so if you get hit once, that basically takes out two shots. So if an enemy ship gets the first shot and takes out two out of your three masts, that's four out of your six shots that are gone now, essentially. So another little issue, and you can kind of see this from some of the pictures at least, they have weird firing arcs, and I'll get a picture of the niggling up here. So it's a little funky, it's not as bad as galleys, but a lot of times the main mast, the middle mast, will be blocked a bit firing forward, of the four mast so you it's kind of a weird angle it's it's easier on most other ships types to get the first two cannons in range with long ships um the stern turn does come in handy there so you can do the turn the stern turn at the end of a move action to try to get more cannons in range and the main mast sail is gigantic it's just this huge sail that sticks out from the sides of the ship uh, and it causes problems for the mizzen mast the third and final mast and i'm talking about three masters here uh, of course, the mizzen mast sometimes can't shoot past the main mast, so it's it's the firing arcs are not optimal. Like I said, it's not quite as bad as galleys, and galleys aren't very good at combat a lot of times anyway. But longships, although they can be quite powerful, um, it's good to come uh, broadside with them, like ships um, that are parallel. It's harder to to shoot forward of the ship or backward backwards as well. So anyway. So long ships, I'm going to go through them a little bit here, not, not each, because I've already done collection review series on this. I've done podcasts, the Frozen North Set Review podcast, where God Mason and I talk about you know each ship separately, so no need to do that here. So pros and cons, though. So the firing arcs, they're really pricey. We'll get to some of that in a second. So three masts, we'll go over those first. At least these are sorted by game piece number, mostly from Frozen North. So... You can see right away the first two, 17 and 18 points. So you're paying about six points per mass, which is quite a bunch. If you think about a two master at like 12 points, three at 18, four at 24, it's just a high kind of like cost per mass to pay. So, you know, anything above five, you know, points per mass gets pretty pricey without a doubt. So they are powerful. So the hunting has two S cannons. That actually can be kind of an issue too. So with short, with crappy firing arcs, and S-range cannons, the, the firepower problem is kind of exacerbated. So you have to get like right next to an enemy ship and be parallel, like broadside to broadside, preferably, in order to get all six shots even in range. So even though they have great firepower, a lot of times you can't utilize all of it at once. Sometimes, though, the firepower is so good that four out of six, the six shots, like two masts in range is plenty sometimes. So or two guns in range, whatever you want to call it. So anyway, sometimes they have abilities that aren't that fitting. So like home line rating with free cargo, kind of annoying. Um, the Nagling is a really good one, all two L cannons, and she's got a she's got a kind of a weird cannon bonus ability that I don't find that useful, but if you get it, you can you get six one ounce shots, basically. So huge in is a little cheaper, 15 points, so pretty decent. Um, and then you get into the two masters, 
which have a similar problem. The mizzen mast, it's tough to tough to get in range with that one sometimes because uh, the, the first mast is so wide and it blocks um, the second mast from shooting in a, at a good firing angle. So these ones are also expensive. So they're all plagued by being overpriced. I mean, I don't think all of them are overpriced. I think the Hugin, the Nagling, maybe even the Munin as well are, you know, about appropriate would cost it. I think the Donar is about right. But for example, the Woden, 18 points for a two master. So you've got the gold capture ability, but you're probably not going to win too many boarding uh, parties with a two master, even with the bonus from the long ship keyword that a lot of people forget about. Um, so really pricey. So a con is just the cost that almost all of them are overpriced for what they give you. And the Freya, Fenrir, they're both overpriced. And then we get into the really, one of the biggest cons of long ships are that the one masters are almost unplayable. Almost all of them are bad. So the Sleepner is one of the best Viking gold runners, and it's a, it's pretty bad compared to other factions. So anyway, the Loki, so 14 points for a one master with L speed, three cargo, a 2S cannon. Sure, you get two shots, but two 2S shots for 14 points before you even add a captain and helmsman, not a good deal. So Valkyrie, a little more cargo, so maybe a gold runner, but the Vikings are very good at running gold in general. So Ragnarok, not so great. Some of these other ones, kind of low on cargo. And the Kettering is the best longship in the game. The Americans actually got the best longship, not the Vikings. So he's got SL speed, canceling built in, 3L cannons, fantastic gunship. One of the better gunships in the game, actually. But she's actually appropriately costed. So if she was a Viking ship, I don't know, she'd be like 21 points probably. <laughs> Which is not even that horrible, actually, because she's such a good ship. But HMS Bartlesville, not very good. Um, some of them are pricey and really slow. So S speed for 15 points on a three master. That's that's going to be a problem either way, um, unless you have some like plus L speed with a captain, which none of the longships have any awesome abilities like that. So then you get HMS Walls one mast for 15 points. That's embarrassing. So that one should be, I don't know, six or seven points maybe. So it's really silly. There are some good ones too. Again, the, the three master is basically the bigger you go with the long ships, the the better the ships get, and the less overpriced it gets. So a lot of the one masters are only a little bit cheaper than the two and three masters, and sometimes it's like the same cost or very similar. So the Baba Yaga is actually a pretty good gunship. I wouldn't trust the miniature trading gallery with some of these constructions. I can see the Calalit is definitely not constructed right. It looks really weird. Um, they are hard to build. That's another con you could mention. That's more from a collecting or that's more of a physical point of view but they are hard to build they're kind of strange or at least it's once you get it it's not too bad but it's hard to even like once you get the stuff punched out it's hard to even like decipher what the bow and stern are and like where each deck goes so especially the two and three masters it's confusing so so it's kind of understandable it's unfortunate but yeah there's another one the region is built wrong as well so anyway they're an interesting kind of challenge. Once you get them built, though, they're really sturdy because they've got like kind of like a keel in the center from from one of the hull pieces. So they actually, when they're derelict, they have like, they're like very difficult to break or anything. There's nothing that would like come off or, or snap. So they're nice and sturdy. Once you do have them built, they're kind of hard to build. Uh, Loki's Revenge is actually a really good one. Cursed with sack built in, S speed, all 2L cannons. So, so with sack and Captain Humphlin, you could get up to up to 12 shots per turn, which is really impressive overall. So, anyway, and the Serpent's Fang is a ship I find underrated. did a review of that one, actually. So, pros and cons. Um, there's too many cons. They're overpriced, weird firing arcs, not great angles. They're bulky and wide, too, so a lot of times home island logistics and whatnot will be difficult. It's hard to, like, have them pass each other because they're so wide. Um, they're kind of hard to build. But pros, you do get good firepower. The three masters can be quite good gunships, especially the cream of the crop, like the Kettering, uh, Baba Yaga, and Loki's Revenge, some of the non-Viking ones, even in the Nagling as well. Nagling, Mutin, Hujin are quite good, along with a few others are good. So the bigger the long ship, the better it will be usually, but almost all of them are overpriced overall as a ship type, so I can't really give like a ringing endorsement for long ships. But they're fun to use. They do look really cool. Uh, they have a lot of nice, colorful sails. The Vikings are an interesting faction, and Frozen North is kind of rare, so it has a definitely a bit of a exotic factor to it. Uh, and they're not quite in the Age of Sail category. It's kind of funky with the timeline WizKids kind of went with. But anyway, 
So long ships, not not a great ship type, but the pros are just enough with the, some of the larger ones to justify using, at least in some games, especially larger games. So I'll leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Let me know what other topics you want me to cover, and I'll be back soon with more Pirates videos.